Profesor Israel, eh, una de las hipótesis que usted está construyendo es que la narración de David en la Biblia sería probablemente más bien una referencia, o no una referencia, pero sería la historia de Jeroboam. So, uh... Indeed, uh, I think that uh, this is one of the interesting uh, things that happened in the last uh, maybe 10 years or so, that uh, uh, the time of Jeroboam II in uh, the Northern Kingdom becomes uh, popular in research, so to speak. Uh, and there have been several articles and studies that uh, have been published in recent years about this. I myself was involved in the editing and publication of uh, a volume of uh, Hebrew Bible and Ancient Israel, the periodical, the journal, I think it was two years ago, which was completely devoted, the entire thing, to Jeroboam II. So let me start by with him, and then we go to the time of David and Solomon. I think that Jeroboam II was the strongest of all Hebrew monarchs, perhaps to be compared to the Omri dynasty, maybe, uh, not, but not to Judah, because he was stronger than them. He ruled for over 40 years in the first half of the 8th century, and this was a period before a direct Assyrian involvement in the region. So he was relatively independent to act uh, in a situation, in an international situation, in which uh, the Assyrians pressed Damascus and uh, uh, allowed Israel to prosper when Damascus was a little bit down, because the story of uh, the 9th and 8th centuries in the Levant is a story of a struggle for hegemony between Damascus, Arab Damascus, and Israel. So here we have a period of half a century of um, Israelite uh, uh, domination in the region, there is reason to believe that Jeroboam II ruled over Judah, in a sense that Judah was a vassal of the Northern Kingdom in his time. Uh, we need to remember the chronistic verse in the Second Book of Kings, telling us about the victory of Joash, his father, over Amatia of Judah at Bet Shemesh, not so far from here. We are maybe 20 kilometers from uh, Bet Shemesh. And we are sitting now in a site where there is evidence, perhaps, for construction uh, in the days of Jeroboam II. Now we turn to the text. The text is very interesting, uh, because uh, the direct text on Jeroboam II is relatively limited. And I would say that, on one hand, he is described by the Deuteronomist, like all other uh, North Israelite rulers, as uh, sinful, and uh, illegitimate in a sense. However, the author, the Judahite author, in the Deuteronomistic history, cannot ignore the prosperity of Israel in his time. There was still a memory of the prosperity. So he needed to explain this prosperity. So in a theological way, the author says, when the God of Israel saw the distress of the Israelites in the time of Jeroboam, so he gave Jeroboam the strength to extend, to expand the borders uh, of Israel in the north and in the south and so on, in the northeast, all the way to Damascus and so on. But this is not the end of the story. Uh, we have to ask ourselves the following. We are aware of the fact that in the Deuteronomistic history, when we look at the books of, uh, uh, also the books of the Pentateuch, but also the Deuteronomistic history, that is to say, uh, Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings, there are pre deuteronomistic materials. And the question that we need to pose is when, uh, what is the nature of these materials and when they were composed? My answer to this in recent years, more and more I'm also diving into biblical studies, sometimes with archaeology, sometimes without much archaeology. I think that uh, there's, here I speak about archaeology, there is evidence in archaeology that the earliest ability to compose literary texts, not uh, only a name on a piece of shirt, but literary texts, 
uh, appears only in the beginning of the 8th century, maybe around 800 BC. So then, if we look at uh, now the Deuteronomistic uh, history and also, in a way, in the Pentateuch, and we pluck outside, we look at northern texts. So, for instance, we have the early Jacob cycle as one example. Then we have the positive cycle of King Saul as another example. And there are several other um, uh, issues. Uh, perhaps here and there, there is a memory of a tradition, royal tradition of Roboam I, uh, uh, sorry, Jeroboam I, for instance. So the question is when they were put in writing, and I think that the answer, first of all, they come from the north. I think that they come from a period when the north was still there, before the takeover by Assyria of the northern kingdom. So this puts me uh, in the time of prosperity, in the days of Jeroboam II. So under this light, we have we can look also at the every, the tradition of David and Solomon. So, uh, for instance, in this uh, issue of uh, Hebrew Bible and ancient Israel, a Tel Aviv University scholar Omer Sergi, who was also my student, suggests that uh, part of the story in the succession history in the second book of Kings, uh, is written on the background of the reality in the Northern Kingdom under Jeroboam II. Then another colleague of mine from Tel Aviv University, Nadav Naaman, proposed several times before, and also in this uh, volume of Hebai, proposed that uh, the wars of King David, they are in fact described on the background of uh, actual events in the 9th and 8th centuries BC, including the days of uh, uh, Jeroboam II. I think, for instance, that uh, when one looks at the story of uh, uh, the Acts of Solomon in the first book of Kings, chapters 3 to 10, there are two kinds of texts over there. Some of them, I think, paint a reality of the time of King Manasseh in Judah. Let me give you an example. The story of the Queen of Sheba coming to visit uh, Solomon in Jerusalem. I think that this uh, fits the time of the great uh, involvement of Judah in Assyrian-dominated Arabian trade in the first half of the 7th century. However, there are other items in the story which fit better the time of Jeroboam II. And let me give you an example or two. Uh -huh. First example, the mention in 1 Kings 9.15 of the construction of Hazor and Megiddo and Gizer by King Solomon. Uh -huh. Since we know by now that this is not an historical description of the time of Solomon, we spoke about this before, so then uh, the question is, uh, what is the reality behind this story? And uh, when we look at these, these cities and the archaeology of these places, I think that it is reasonable to suggest that the memory of the three cities being the centers of administration of the Northern Kingdom in the territory, apart from the capital at Samaria, the, I think the reality should be in the first half of the 8th century, in the time of Jeroboam. Let me give you another example for Solomon. <coughs> Solomon is described as a king uh, who, who is very prosperous economically, mm -hmm. including, uh -huh. including in the trade of horses. Uh -huh. Solomon had many stables and traded horses, and he had cities of horses, and he had cities of chariots. Uh -huh. Where is this coming from? We don't have any evidence for horses and chariots like this in the 10th century. In fact, you know, Chariots, be, chariots became important in the warfare in the region, in the Levant, in the ancient Near East, more in the time, also before, but in the Iron Age, especially in our region, in the time of the Assyrian involvement in the 9th and 8th centuries BC. Not only that, when we look at the actual finds on the ground, archaeology, the best evidence comes again from Megiddo, the site, the site which I have been excavating since uh, the 90s, now more than 20 years. 20 years. I must say, <laughs> horrified <laughs> to say, I'm horrified to say. 
So uh, the Megiddo staples are, very, uh, I think, a very good example because you have a situation at Megiddo with the city, which dates to the first half of the 8th century, a statue, which dates to the first half of the 8th century, that is to say to the time of Jeroboam, basically, mm -hmm. in Israel. And this city is devoted almost completely to the horse industry, which means to training and breeding uh, of horses, uh, and uh, of course horses which were then probably traded for the chariot armies of the region, first and foremost probably the Assyrian Empire. So these are examples of how to read the stories of David and Solomon, some of them at least, on the background of the situation in the Northern Kingdom in the first half of the 8th century. <laughs> Amazing answer.